YouTube friends, welcome back to my channel. And if you are new here, welcome to The Painted Cell. Okay, so in today's video, I'm going to share with you how I transformed several items in my home decor stash that I either already had on hand, I purchased from thrift stores, or I got on clearance sale in regular retail stores. Now, I'm sure I'm not the only one that loves to browse on Pinterest and look at all of those high-end designer luxury items and gain inspiration from them. I love to look on there. I will save my favorite things and I will refer back to them for inspiration for paint techniques or just style or maybe furniture arrangement or whatever the case. I love looking on Pinterest. And of course, if you're like me, you have thousands and thousands of things pinned. Now, a lot of these items, I have to wonder who can afford them anyway. I mean, some of them are thousands of dollars for just one piece, one decorative piece. I know there are people that have that kind of budget, but a lot of us just don't. And so that's fine. We can at least recreate something so it kind of mimics that look and feel. So today, that's what I'm going to share with you. I pulled out some things that I had and I applied a textured finish to all of the pieces. If you're not interested in seeing how I created these items, I will put a timestamp right here so that you can skip ahead and see the before and after photos. If you are interested in seeing how I created all of these items, just keep watching. Now, the first thing you want to do is gather all of your materials that you are going to need to create the finish on your items. So here are all of the materials that I like to use when creating these textured finishes on my decor pieces. There are a lot of different ways that you can create texture on your project pieces, but this one is one that I really like to use. I've used it in creating my faux brick look, and I've used it on the pieces that I'm going to share with you today, and that is all-purpose stucco patch. So this is a small batch, and I actually wanted to order the, the large bag that I could mix myself, but they didn't have any at Ace Hardware, which is where I went at the time. And so I just grabbed one of these small tubs. It is 32 ounces, and I think it was right around $11. Now, because this is a stucco designed for exterior, it is good to use for pots on the outside of your home. However, since I mix this product with other products, I think you should still apply a top coat after your project is done. If you're going for just a white textured look, you can just apply this. As you can see, it has a nice fine grit to it. It dries really hard and it dries fairly quickly. So this is the first thing that you'll need if you want to do the looks that I'm doing today. The next thing you're gonna need is joint compound. I didn't wanna lift up the five gallon bucket, but you can buy these in smaller tubs as well. Some people have used also like a small tub of spackling if you don't have a lot of projects. I am always working on projects, always painting and always using joint compound, so I always buy the largest available. Now the next thing you're going to need is some type of paint. I always either get a flat paint in a quart size, usually from your local hardware store, and you have it mixed in whatever color you want to use. Now for these projects, I was going on several of them, a terracotta look. So I picked up a couple of colors that sort of looked like terracotta, one a little bit darker and the other one a little bit lighter. And to these, you can add other colors. You can add a black chalk paint to kind of tone it down. You can add white to lighten it up. You can add a dab of yellow craft paint or maybe a brown craft paint like this. So you can alter the colors, but if you're going to spend as much money as paint costs now, I think this was maybe $16.99 or $18.99. So paint is a lot more expensive than it used to be. If you can get Oops paint in the color that you happen to like, that's fantastic. So I picked up two different colors in this sort of terracotta family. If you happen to have chalk paint on hand, you can certainly use that. It is very matte and that is one of the goals. I wouldn't suggest using much more than an eggshell at the most. I wouldn't maybe recommend satin or semi-gloss or anything like that. So this is just personally what I do. And then you also might want to have some type of white on hand to lighten your mixtures. You can even use the Waverly paint that comes from Walmart. Again, it doesn't have to be chalk paint. I've used all of these things. The main thing is you want to use something with a matte finish or at most, like I said, maybe an eggshell of some house paint that you may have left over. 
you're definitely going to need a few different paint brushes and a putty knife. Now this smaller one comes in handy working on small projects and it gives a lot of ease of use. You can use a bigger one if you're doing a larger surface. See that stucco is still on my fingers. Now this is my favorite paintbrush. It is a short handled angled brush. Ign ignore these few bristles here that got <laughs> pushed out I guess from being in storage. But this Wooster brush, like I said, is my favorite. They sell it in a lot of different places. The handle is rubber and very comfortable in your hand here. So when you're doing a lot of work, it's not going to give you any type of blister there. So that's why I like these and I can control this really well when I'm painting. You can get a lot of different looks with just this brush. Now this one is one that has been well loved and it has been in a lot of these mixtures that I'm talking about and it has gotten very stiff. I need to soak it in some boiling hot water and I think I saw where someone put vinegar in there. But for these particular projects, it's actually been fine because it is stiffened up, but the ends are still slightly flexible. So you can get a good texture with this kind of brush if you have an old one where you can get a good pouncing and it creates a lot more texture and depth to your pieces. So you'll need some of these. I always have chip brushes on hand. This one I trimmed just to apply in different areas and this one's a little bit narrower. This is one and a half and this is a two inch. Always grab these when you can and have them on hand if you're going to do a lot of paint projects. The next material is one of my favorites of all time. Now I like that old world aged look. So for me, this is a game changer. It really works well with everything. It's easy to control, easy to work with. I think much more than a wax, which sometimes can give a blotchy look. Sometimes it can look dirty. I do like the dark waxes and I've used them for years and years. I've started with uh, Annie Sloan's dark wax, which is great. And I do like them for certain applications, but this is very easy to work with, very easy to control, to dab off. You can water it down a little bit if you want it a little bit thinner, and it just really gives that great look. They do have more colors. I think maybe something called smoke, and I think that's more of a gray. So just pick whatever color you like. But for me, this Java Brown has been my all-time favorite. When you're done your project, you always want to give it a good top coat. This is going to be great for items that will be indoors only. I have used it on things that I will be using on a covered porch. I would suggest if it's going to be outside and getting a lot of wear and tear from the weather, I would use something that is designed to be outdoors. Now this one is an exterior finish. The only thing with this one is, and I couldn't find anything that was matte, it is a satin finish. So on the items that I knew I was going to be using outdoors, I gave them a really great coat with this exterior product. And then what I did to try to tone that down, I sprayed a light coat of a matte finish over top of it, just for extra protection and to tone down the sheen a little bit. Now, if you like a satin finish or even a semi-gloss, just get whatever finish you would like to use. But again, if you're going to use it outdoors, I would suggest an exterior top coat. If it happens to be raining and I can't go outside and spray my projects, I will use a polycrylic. These products are fantastic. They give a really great hard finish and they are water-based. They're very easy for cleanup, just a little bit of soap and water. And this one says clear matte and this one says clear ultra flat. I don't know if one is more matte than the other. I haven't noticed a huge difference. Maybe I'll test those side by side, but I have used both of them and I've been really happy with the results. I would also suggest getting some gloves, and if you have a Lazy Susan, it would make your life a lot easier. I didn't have one, but on items like this, you can set it on there and just spin it around without having to pick it up and touch it and, you know, move it very much. So I would suggest some gloves, paper towels, lots of paper towels, a little container with some water in it, and the Lazy Susan. Now this is something that I did last year 
I got this look with just joint compound and some paint. And one of the things is if you do the joint compound first to create the texture and it chips off, you're going to have that white underneath, which is okay. It's easily touched up. When I mix the paint and the joint compound together, I don't see that happening as much. So it it's really just whatever you want to do. But I created all this texture with just joint compound and paint. I actually am kind of over this purple. I used it in the guest room when I did uh, sort of a lavender theme in there. So I think I'm going to redo these at some point and make them look a little bit different. After you have all of your materials and the colors of paints that you want to use, you're going to need to gather all of your decor items that you want to give a makeover. If you are inspired to do a textured finish and you don't have anything currently at your home, head out to the thrift store, a local charity type thrift store, maybe the Goodwill, maybe now is the time for yard sales, they're happening everywhere. So go out and look for pieces that have the shape or style or maybe function of whatever it is that you want to create. If you need some planner pots, go out and get those. And sometimes, as you'll see in this video, you can even go to places like the Dollar Tree or Walmart and pick up something that is plastic and inexpensive and make it look like stone. So if you can't find anything anywhere else, you can always check your retail stores. So let me explain the general process of how I create these textured finishes on my pieces. Instead of going piece by piece and going through the process over and over and over again, I basically use the same materials and the same techniques on every single piece. And just the way that you apply them using your own creative and artistic touch, they'll turn out a little bit differently, everyone's will. So whenever you do your projects, if you want to use these techniques and finishes and products, they'll probably turn out a little bit differently, but they're so easy to work with, you almost can't mess it up. So of course, the first thing you're gonna to want to do is make sure all of your items are free of any kind of dirt, oil, or grease. You wanna make sure they're nice and clean. And what I like to do for this is use Crud Cutters Gloss Off. You can use any cleaning product that you want to. You wanna make sure that it doesn't leave any kind of residue. And in some cases, you may not even need to wipe them down at all. This paint mixture usually sticks to almost anything. It's basically like a super thick chalk paint textured chalk paint, so in general, it's going to stick, but still, make sure all of your items are clean. Now, I hate to say this, but I don't have an exact measurement as far as mixing the paint with the joint compound and or the stucco patch. You really cannot mess this up. All you're doing is adding a texture medium to your paint, so you can add more or less. Just mix it up and adjust it as you go along, and I, I think you'll find that it's very easy to work with. Let's say you have a piece like this that you want to paint and it's glossy and you don't want any white showing through. Let's say you want to go with a completely different color and you're just you're afraid that something might show through. It's probably not going to, but just in case, you can take a spray primer coat and just take it outside and spray it and let it dry really well. It's not really a necessary step, but you certainly can do that. I did that on a couple of items that were shiny and plastic, which you will see in this video. But again, it's not really necessary because in general, the product is going to stick to this and it's going to cover everything. For this first project, I decided to fill in the floral detail on this piece because I didn't care for the style of the flower design. I used the stucco patch by itself to cover the middle section so that I could use this for all four seasons. To me, these flowers had a summer tropical vibe. Now I know I should have been wearing gloves to protect my fingers, but I ran out so I just went for it and used my bare hands. You can always use a joint compound mixture if you prefer a less gritty texture. I like both options and you'll see that I use a variety of combinations throughout all of these projects. Some will have the stucco patch mixed in, some will just be chalk paint by itself. You can use a combo of any of these products and they always make great textures to add to your pieces. Now for this tall pot, I know this is very messy because I have several projects going on at the same time, but I took this out and I spray painted it with the ultra matte paint and primer and you can see it's still kind of shiny. Anyway, so this, I just wanted to make sure I hid all of the red. The problem is I had it outside and it was sitting in the grass so you can still see a little red. I will put that up on 
a platform when I go to paint this with my brush. So that's what we're going to be doing next. And I apologize for the lighting. It is dark outside, as you can see, and I'm working with what I have here. For this big piece, I was going to go ahead and mix up some of my stucco patch with some of my brick and terracotta colors, which I showed you, but I had some old stuff left over that I had put in. The, it's not a Debbie's Design Diary paint. I just used the little pot. So I want to go ahead and use this up. It's really drying out. And so I thought, well, I'll just go ahead and use this and try to cover up some of this black and give it some more texture. So that's what I'm going to do here. And I'm just going to apply it haphazardly, really no rhyme or reason, just really get some on there, add some texture and some different, some different movement on here. This paint has a little bit of, it's somewhere between a brick and a terracotta. Uh, it's a little bit darker when it dries, but I use this on my faux brick wall, and so it's a really pretty color. I love all of the colors that are in brick, and terracotta tile, and I love natural stone. So what I'm going to do is just kind of pounce some of this, and I'll do some smooth motions as well. And as it dries, you can kind of go back over it and get the chippy paint look, which I'll be showing you that on the later layers. So for now, I'm just going to go ahead and scrape all that I can out of here and get it on this piece. Next, I'm going to add another color in the terracotta family, that terracotta brick color family. Um, and I, I already had this mixed up. Again, it is paint joint compound and stucco and I'm just going to go ahead and keep adding it to this ewer. Here's what it looks like. I left some of the black primer showing through for dimension and I really love this color. I'm going to go ahead and add some of this lighter color that I had and we'll just keep adding our layers. You can layer several different colors for a dramatic effect, or you can keep it very neutral for a soft, clean look. This heavy urn was a previous makeover project, but I decided that I was ready for a change. On this piece, I decided to go a little bit lighter, but also still keep it in that terracotta family. This metal pitcher is from Hobby Lobby. I like the chippy paint, but I wanted to tone it down and add some different greens to the finish. If you are using chalk paint, 
You don't always have to add joint compound or any other additive to create texture. I like to use a putty knife for paint and textured paint applications. The effects are different than what you'll get from using a paintbrush. I seem to be on a green kick, so I used all the same colors on these two candlesticks for another fun pop of color. I love all of the detail on this $1.25 thrift store find. I decided to go for an aged terracotta look on this piece as well. On all of the pieces that you're seeing in this video today, I added that Java Brown decorative glaze in varying amounts to really add some depth to the paint finishes and bring a lot of character to all of the pieces. I also like to go back with some highlights before I add the final top coat. For this first decorative egg-shaped finial, I decided to enhance the pattern by using two different paint colors, a cream shade and a light terracotta shade. I also added that dark java brown glaze I went back and touched up the gold rope detail. And I ended up changing the rest of the gold finish to more of a bronze tone. So for this egg, I ended up going in a completely different direction than what you're seeing right here. At first I was going for more of an Easter type egg look, but then I decided that I wanted it to be something a little more neutral and natural looking, and so I changed it to more of a concrete or gray stone look.
Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I can't wait to share how I'm going to use all of these items throughout my home and some on the front porch. I actually already have them out there, so I'll share that with you probably in the next video. And I will be sharing a couple of things that I also purchased for the home, like these curtains behind me. They are linked in my Amazon store. I do need to steam clean them. You can see they still have wrinkles in them, but I absolutely love these curtains. They're a beautiful velvet and lined. So anyway, I'll get into that more in my next video when I show you how I'm decorating the kitchen here, but they are gorgeous. If you do check out the link below, this color is called Pete Green, and I'm going to order several of the other colors. They are just, they're really nice quality to me for the money. So I usually don't like to push or recommend products. I just don't really like to do that unless I really, really like something. And I love these curtains. So I will share, show these to you in their entirety once I get all of the wrinkles out. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I would love to hear what your favorite project was, the before and after in the description box below. If you have any questions that I haven't answered in this video, please be sure to drop me a comment below for those as well. And I will do my best to answer all of the questions. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. If you haven't subscribed already, I would love for you to do so. And if you do, make sure you click the notification bell and select the option all so you won't miss the next upload. I hope everyone is doing well. Please take care of yourselves and those loved ones around you. And until the next video, bye for now. Mm -hmm.